you need to avoid this PC building mistake. The term CPU bottleneck gets thrown around a lot online, but what is one and what do they look like? Well, in today's video, you're in luck because not only am I going to explain what a CPU bottleneck is, I'm also going to demonstrate one because I kind of paired an RTX 3080 with a 12 year old processor. But let's get into it. So let's explain a CPU bottleneck first. Essentially, a CPU bottleneck is when your processor is holding back your GPU's performance. Ideally, in a gaming PC, you want your GPU to be the bottleneck for the rest of the system. But let me get this clear, there will always be some sort of bottleneck in a gaming PC or any PC for that matter, because you'll just have unlimited performance else. So essentially, long story short is GPU bottleneck, good. CPU bottleneck, not so good. But let me get this clear, don't go out and pair like a GT710 with a 7800X 3D because that doesn't make sense even though you are GPU bottlenecked. And don't go pairing a second gen i3 with an RTX 4090 because you'll be CPU bottlenecked. So to demonstrate what a proper CPU bottleneck looks like, I've paired my RTX 3080 with a 12 year old Intel Xeon E3 1240V2 with 16 gigabytes of DDR3, 1600 megahertz memory and a two terabyte Western Digital SN770 NVMe SSD. Also the Spectrum Meltdown mitigations have been disabled to give the CPU a bit more of a fighting chance. And to show you what a sensible CPU pairing is for the RTX 3080, I've also tested it with my Ryzen 5 7600. The specs for this system will be linked in the description below and I did build it recently in a video which you can watch up there. I've tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K using the latest Nvidia driver which will be on the screen somewhere because I don't know what it is off the top of my head. But without any more talking, let's get into the benchmarks. Starting off the benchmarks today with Cyberpunk 2077 and at 4K we see no difference between the average frame rate between both the CPUs. The 1% low on the Xeon does suffer ever so slightly but it's only by 5 frames per second. 1440p is where we do start to see a bit of a performance difference at 60% in favour of the Ryzen 5 7600 which is quite a lot of performance being lost with the average frame rate and that 1% low is looking pretty bad on the Xeon. With 1080p the average frame rate actually went down with the Intel Xeon which is very indicative of a CPU bottleneck and the 1% low only went up by an extra two frames per second. But if you compare this to the 7600, you're losing almost half of your performance and more than half with the 1% low as well. Fortnite is an esports game and this is going to be very telling of a CPU bottleneck and it is today because even at 4K we are losing performance especially with that 1% low where you're losing half of the performance right there. Both 1440p and 1080p are exactly the same on the Intel Xeon which is just showing it's choking the RTX 3080 and the Xeon is the performance limiting component in this whole setup so that's not great right there and you're just losing a ton of performance, more than half of that of the Ryzen 5 7600. Hogwarts Legacy is up next and this game can be pretty CPU demanding but on 4K it's really not that much of a problem but the 1% lowers are slightly suffering. 1440p does see a lot of performance lost compared to the Ryzen 5 7600 and this is showing the CPU bottleneck once again. But unlike Fortnite 1080p does give more performance in Hogwarts Legacy but then again you are losing half of the performance compared to a modern CPU. So yeah that is a lot of frame rate you're leaving on the table. F123 was a very weird game today because you're losing half of the performance at 4K which is not something I was expecting. I didn't really think F123 was that CPU demanding and even at both 1080p and 1440p you're almost losing well the Ryzen 5 7600 has a performance gain of 150% at 1440p and 168% at 1080p so yeah that is a CPU bottleneck and a half I'd like to say. Rainbow Six Siege is another esports game and 4k performance isn't particularly that 
bad. The 1% low was looking somewhat decent on the Intel Xeon. It didn't really lag that far behind the Ryzen 5. But 4040p sees these frame rates absolutely tumble because you're losing half your performance on average compared to the Ryzen 5. But the 1% lows aren't falling apart compared to the average frame rate on the Xeon, so that is to be known. The 1080p performance is exactly the same as Quad HD. That is because the Xeon is just totally holding back the RTX 3080 and you're just losing bucket loads of frame rate here. So yes, that is a CPU bottleneck. God of War is up last today and even at 4K, the Xeon is holding back the RTX 3080 but it is still playable at 65 frames per second but then again the one percent low is starting to suffer 1440p does scale pretty decently compared to 4k where the ryzen 5 has a 32 percent performance uplift which is pretty substantial that's like a next tier of gpu but it's not as bad as the other games we've seen today and then 1080p sees basically the same frame rates as 1440p on the xeon which is a trend we've seen in basically every game tested today so yes that processor is holding back the rtx 3080 and this is a cpu bottleneck well the xeon basically holds back the rtx 3080 at every single tested resolution today but the one that is least affected is 4k this is totally within my expectations because the gpu has to do more work as it's got to push more pixels than at the lower resolutions like 1440p and 1080p essentially the higher the resolution the less work the cpu's got to do but even then at uhd some games did fall behind quite a bit particularly the esports games like fortnite and rainbow six siege they were lacking performance at uhd but then again cyberpunk lost no average frame rate and the one percent lows were a bit off but for the most part it was fine Switching up to 1440p and 1080p and here we see the limitations of older processors and the effects of a CPU bottleneck. That is because a lot of the games performed the same if not worse at 1080p which is a big indicator of a CPU bottleneck because the GPU is just sitting there waiting for the processor because it's got to prepare all the frames and the GPU is just waiting. A big problem of pairing a weak processor with a relatively strong GPU are the impact to the 1% lows. These were the biggest pain point today as the Xeon just didn't really have that much performance there. And 1% lows are arguably more important than the average frame rate as they affect the perceived smoothness of the frame delivery. Essentially, the closer they are to the average frame rate, the better because this means the frame rate is more consistent and there's less stutters and the gameplay is going to be smoother. Of course, this Intel Xeon that I tested the 3080 with today is an extreme example, but I wanted to demonstrate a CPU bottleneck and I think I achieved that goal. But the point I'm trying to make is you need to get a processor which complements your graphics card quite well, like the 7600 with the RTX 3080, I think it's an excellent pairing. Or maybe if you wanted to do something lower end, maybe something like a 12100F i3 with a Radeon RX 6600, I think that's also an excellent pairing too. These are just some examples of excellent CPU pairings and even if you wanted to cut it down really budget, you could pair like a 4th gen i7 with an RX 580 and I still think that would be a decent pairing as well. The data today has shown that the higher the resolution, the less the CPU matters, but this doesn't mean you should skimp out on your processor as you should still get a CPU which complements your graphics card well. One takeaway I can make today is the Ryzen 5 7600 is an excellent CPU and if you pair it with GPUs like the RTX 3080 I use today or even the 7800 XT from AMD or if you want to make a newer PC build with something like the RTX 4070 or 4070 Super, I mean this processor is going to be pretty good for both 1440p and maybe even 4K gaming. Yes, it will slightly hold these cards back at 1080p but to be honest, if you're spending that amount of money on a graphics card, are you going to be playing at 1080p? I don't think so. So 1440p and 4K, definitely the sweet spot for this CPU, with these GPUs, of course. So I think the takeaway for this video is don't pair your shiny new graphics card with an ancient processor because you're just going to be wasting money as you're going to be wasting performance. 
So if you want to see how this PC got built, there's a video for it up there, and there's another GPU testing video down there if that one suits you fancy more. With that being said, I'm going to leave this one here, and I'll catch you in the next one.